When it comes to death in JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, I feel like main villains often get it the worst, with Araki either saving ironically tragic deaths for them, or prolonging their suffering with fates that are worse than death. Along with this, all of the deaths that these villains experience are unique to their characters, and the level of intensity varies as time goes on. So I thought it would be interesting to discuss which of the main villains in the series got off the easiest, and which of them had it the worst. <laughs> So to try to make this video an accurate assessment of which of these villains got off the best and which of them got off the worst, I wanted to take into account a few things about their death. First, of course, the hardship that led up to said death, this being either the final fight or just the events that got them to where they are now. And then you have the death itself. Was it slow? Was it quick? Did they feel much pain? And finally, I wanted to look at the lasting impact of their death or deaths to see if they got off better than one might assume. So without further ado, I think Yoshikage Kira got off the easiest when it comes to villain deaths. And the reason the reason I believe this is not only was Kira's final fight relatively tame when it came to trading blows unlike a lot of other main villains in the series, but Kira's death also had the luxury of being instantaneous, as his head was crushed by an ambulance. But also, the fate that followed him past his death wasn't too terrible either, because even though his soul was dragged away by the hands of the ghost alleyway, we see this only result in him becoming a spirit detective with amnesia and dead man's questions. And while in this ghost form, he can pursue his goal of a peaceful life relatively unimpeded, all the while being somewhat rehabilitated into a better person by his work. In fact, some could say that Kira kind of made off better than most people who are actually even still alive in the series. So with a death that more so helped or benefited the dying, I feel like the next up would be the more mundane deaths that we see of main villains in the series, such as the funny Valentine who was stabbed in the throat by Lucy Steele and bled out. It's a simple death with not much flair to it. Then came the funny Valentine who was shot in the neck by Johnny Joestar and died moving his body to the next world, likely suffering a bit more than the neck wound, but not too much. But then you had the funny Valentine who had both his wrist slit and then his throat cut by Diego Rando. An awful way to go, but it was soon followed up by two funny Valentines who both had their throat slit by Diego who was disguised as funny Valentine at the time. But then came the real tryhard, the funny Valentine who was cut up, gutted, and run over by a train. This guy is a bit of a tryhard, but he was outmatched by the utter embarrassment that came from the next two funny Valentines, these being the one that was shot in the head by another funny Valentine being manipulated by Gyro Steel Balls, who then turned that gun on himself and shot himself to death, getting utterly clowned on. And yes, I count all these as main villain deaths, as Funny Valentine is the main villain of Steel Ball Run, and it's not the only case of a villain dying more than once. This is just a rare case where the villain who dies more than once is technically a different person. Though ironic, someone who ends up only dying once in the series, and honestly feels like they're appearing in this video a lot earlier than they deserve given how bad of a person they were, is Dio Brando. The reason for this being, simply put, Dio died relatively quickly. Half of his body was bursted when his stand cracked, and while sure you can describe his fight as is probably one of the most physically intensive that a villain has gone through in JoJo, with him losing limbs, getting multiple holes blown through him, and even having his brain rattled, we know for a fact that to Dio, physical harm is just an annoyance, especially when Dio gets Joseph's blood. He can heal his wounds relatively quickly, and he's basically dead when his remains are dissolved by the sun. So for the series' most iconic vampire, he doesn't suffer the same pain of disintegration as other vampires in the series have. All in all, Dio's death was not that bad compared to how bad Dio was as a person. In fact, a lot of Dio's suffering comes from being trapped in a coffin for a hundred years. And sure, that's awful compared to like a normal person's death, but that's not much when you compare it to some of the worst things that happen to characters in the series. Also, for the most part, Dio's plans weren't hindered by his death. His followers attempted to get revenge for him and continued to do his work, and one of them even succeeded, especially succeeding in Dio's most important goal, of resetting the universe and proving that heaven really existed. Dio made it out of the series relatively okay. Though someone who I could describe as being very much not okay when they died is the priest, Enrico Pucci. Pucci's death is honestly one of the most isolated bits of suffering that a villain gets to experience in the series, as he not only has his body slowly shut down due to oxygen poisoning, but he's completely defenseless when Weather Report, the stand, slowly presses its fist into Pucci's head, giving him an extremely painful death before quickly slamming the fist into his face, finishing him off. And then, what makes this even worse is upon his death, everything Pucci had worked for during the entirety of Part 6 is completely undone, and his soul is erased from the universe. This version of Pucci completely ceases to exist. And it's unclear, given the ending of Part 6, if a new Pucci was even created to replace him, 
based on the soul of the energy left behind from his erasure, similar to Irene or Anakis. So, Poochie might actually just be completely gone from the rest of all universes, thanks to his actions during Part 6, and that makes his death cosmically horrifying. Though dying in one universe is bad, I feel like dying in multiple dimensions is a bit worse, which is why I'm putting Funny Valentine next on this list, as Funny Valentine's actual death might be rather quick as he was shot dead by Johnny Joestar, but the moments before this, for an undisclosed amount of time, he was suffering in excruciating pain, as he was hit with an infinitely rotating bullet causing every cell in his body to spin and burrowing him deeper and deeper into underground causing him to suffocate. But what makes this death a nightmare is that no matter how many times Valentine tried to escape, he was always forced back to the same position or the same spot. And even when he switched control of his stand to another Valentine from another world, the effect transferred to that Valentine. It's a death that stretches across all dimensions and all universes, effectively causing Valentine to suffer hundreds upon hundreds of deaths until he forgets how many times he has died. And so, his final, actual death is an escape from that suffering. Though at the end of the day, Funny Valentine did end up escaping from his suffering. But imagine if he was stuck in that situation forever. I feel like a fate like that is much worse. And that's why I'm putting the ultimate life form himself, Cars, above Valentine. Even though Cars technically isn't dead, only assumedly brain dead. And his defeat came about when he was launched into space. Trying to return to the Earth, he accidentally froze over himself, turning him into a creature that existed between organic and inorganic life. And while he floated through space, he soon began to beg for death that would never come, until slowly, but surely, he stopped thinking. This defeat falls into the ironic fate worse than death category, as Cars did get exactly what he wanted. He is now an ultimate force with an unkillable body, but now all he can do with that body is enjoy the cold void of space. Though I'd be lying if I said Cars' death wasn't made a little less special, given that he's not the only person in the series to suffer this fate. In fact, it's happened two more times since him, starting first with Anubis, a stand that met a similar fate when his blade was dropped in the bottom of the Nile River, where it was ignored and then forgotten about forever. And then you have Magenta to Magenta, who was trapped at the bottom of a river with his stand equipped, leaving him unharmed, but also unable to escape. And soon, he also stopped thinking, just like Cars. Though this doesn't change that Cars' defeat and death has to be one of the most awful things you can do to a person, but a fate worse than death is only worse than death if the said death actually stops the person from suffering. Though, in the case of the number one, death is now just a routine for them, as this honor belongs to the boss of Passione, Diavolo. As in the case of Diavolo, his death is still happening. He is trapped in an endless loop of death, and not only does it take elements from every other main villain death in the series, but he also doesn't get the luxury of going brain dead like cars, Diavolo, upon death, is instantly reset to the state he was before he died, meaning he can never escape the torturous existence that is his life. And along with this, nothing that he does will ever matter, as upon death it will all be reset. And the only thing that he carries with him onto his next life is the memories of his former death, leaving him an even more paranoid mess than he was before he entered the state due to his now new inescapable fate. And it is hands down one of the worst things anyone has ever done to a person in JoJo. Though according to Araki, as of 2019, Diavolo's death is 100% deserved and justified, and he doesn't feel like he went too far at all. All, even if his fans say otherwise. Which is sort of the inspiration for this video, as it got me thinking about villains' deaths in the series, and I started comparing the different severities of deaths, and of course me looking at these villains' deaths helped me reinforce my idea that they are perfectly tied to them narratively as characters, and Araki wasn't obsessed with one-upping himself every time he killed a main villain. You have Dio persisting past his death, Kira finding peace in a life away from people, or even Funny Valentine being used and disposed of multiple times the same way he uses and disposes of others. They are all perfectly well-written deaths, even if they don't match each other in severity. And that's just another thing I just love about JoJo. And I'm excited to see how the main villain of Jojolian might die. I might even make a follow up talking about them in comparison to the deaths that we've seen so far. So if you enjoyed hearing me talk about this, and you want to see more videos like in the future, I have a Patreon at patreon.com slash many not the bad guy. And if you want to avoid a death on par with villains like these, you can do so by buying a copy of Shimonetta at buyshimonetta.com.